الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى We're going to be doing fiqh al-usra The fiqh related to family Today, by the name of Allah, is going to be the first lesson and the first class. The way that I plan to go over this topic, and the way that I hope, inshallah ta'ala, to explain it, to cover it, is in the following way. We're going to speak about two topics, inshallah ta'ala. The first topic is and nikah marriage and the second one is and nafaqat which is the expenditure and the provision and providing for your spouse your wife your children if you're married to more than one wife how do you provide for each one and all of that inshallah ta'ala so the two topics that i'm going to go through what's the first one and nikah and the second one is and nafaqat and inshallah ta'ala it won't be technical it will be easy for you to understand to digest because it is something practical. It is something you can go home and apply in your life, especially if you're married. And if you're not married, it is also something you can uh, apply in your future and the person you want to get married to and the steps that you should take. And also, I will share uh, advices, my humble experience in some issues. I will share it as well, inshallah ta'ala. So today, inshallah ta'ala, we will be speaking, speaking about an nikah And maybe even next week, we'll still talk about an nikah marriage. Because it's a very big chapter. Today, I want to speak about 12 points under nikah. Write it down. Today, when I speak about an nikah marriage, I want to talk about 12 things. The first one is, it's ruling. I want to speak about hukmun nikah. What's the ruling of marriage? Okay. What is, what, what is its ruling? The second thing I want to speak about is bi'idhnillahil kareem ayyun nisa'i khayrun What woman is best to marry? What woman is best to marry? What type of woman should you marry? Third what man is best to marry? This is for the sisters. What type of man should you accept his proposal? And number four, I want to speak about offering one's daughter or sister to a virtuous man. Offering your daughter or your sister to a virtuous person To a virtuous, righteous person Number five Nazaru ila al-makhtubati Looking at the proposed spouse Looking at the sister you want to get married to. We're going to speak about that as well, inshallah ta'ala. Number six, al khitbah. We'll be speaking about the proposal, the actual proposal. 
Number seven, we'll talk about Aqdun Nikah, the marriage contract. The marriage contract. Number eight. Wujub sti'danil mar'ati qabla zawaj The obligation of getting the woman's approval before marriage. The obligation of getting the woman's approval before marriage. Number nine. Khutbatun nikah The speech for the wedding ceremony The speech for the wedding ceremony Number 10 Istihbab al-tahni'ah bin nikah it is recommended to offer congratulations for a marriage. It is recommended to offer congrat congratulation for a marriage. Number 11, as sadaq the dowry. as sadaq the dowry. And number 12 Mata yustahabbul bina When is it preferred to begin cohabiting with one's wife When is it preferred to begin cohabiting with one's wife Those are the 12 that I hope to cover today, inshallah ta'ala. Let's start with the first one, which is Hukmuhu, the ruling of marriage. Marriage, as the scholars say, it goes through the five Ahkamu Taklifiya. It goes through the five types of rulings in the sharia the types the, the five ahkam taklifiya meaning it can be wajib it can also be mustahab highly recommended it could be makru disliked it could be mubah and it can also even be haram Marriage goes through all of those five. It can be each and every one of those based on the situation that the individual is in. But the scholars, they say, generally speaking, generally, generally speaking, marriage is highly recommended. Generally. The default position, the general that it's a what? It's a highly recommended, highly encouraged. The reason is because Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّةً Allah said to the Messenger, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُحَمَّدْ We have sent رُسُلًا and messengers. We have sent messengers. مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Before you. Before you, Muhammad, we sent messengers. وَجَعَلْنَا And we have made for those messengers أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّةً Spouses, partners, and offspring. So this is something that the previous prophets practiced. Marriage. If the person doesn't have, the scholars they say, he doesn't have a legal reason. A shar'i reason. He doesn't have it. It is disliked for him to leave it. 
for him to say, I don't want to get married, but you don't have a reason, a justifiable reason. It is disliked. And it's haram for you to try to get closer to Allah by not getting married. It's an innovation. If you say, I want to get closer to Allah by never getting married, it's haram. But if you leave it because you don't want to get married, then it's disliked. It's disliked. Three men came to the Prophet ﷺ's house. Three men. And they asked the Prophet ﷺ's wife or wives about the Prophet's ibadah. He said, how, does the, how is the Prophet's worship? How is his ibadah like? And they were informed. They were informed about the Prophet's ibadah. كَأَنَّهُمْ تَقَالُوهَا as soon as they were told, they belittled the Prophet's efforts, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Meaning they thought to themselves that they could do better. So they belittled what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did. And they said to each other, Wa nahnu min Rasulillah. Where are we in regards to the Messenger? The reason why he's taking it easy on himself, that's what they were saying, is because he's forgiven for his past sins. And his upcoming sins. We don't have that privilege. We've not been honored like that. So we need to exert a lot of effort. So one of them said, All night I will be praying. I won't sleep. All night I'm going to be praying. Another one said, I will be fasting for the whole entire year. Every day of the year I'm fasting. I will not miss a day. وَلَا أُفْطِرَ And I will never break my fast. وَقَالَ آخَرُ Another one came, the third one, he came and he said, أَنَا أَعْتَزِلُ النِّسَاءِ I will stay away from the women. I will not come in contact with a woman. فَلَا أَتَزَوَّجُ أَبَدًا And I will never get married. فَجَاءَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The messenger came to them and said to them, أَنْتُمُ الَّذِينَ قُلْتُمْ Are you guys the ones who said this? Very fine. Nabi Allah Muhammad verified things. He didn't jump to conclusions. If he heard something, he will ask the person, is this true that you said this? Some people don't. They hear something, they jump to con conclusions. And they finish off the story. So the messenger said to them, are you the ones who said this, this, this? They said yes. Then the messenger said, Ama wallahi, by Allah, inni la akhsharkum lillahi. I am the most fearful of Allah Azza I'm the one who fears Allah the most. له, and I have more taqwa. I have more taqwa for Allah Azza wa than any one of you. With that said, ولكني أصوم, I fast. وأفطر, and I break my fast. وأصلي, I pray. وأرقد, I lie down and I sleep. وأتزوج النساء, I marry women. Then the messenger said a golden statement. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي Anyone who desires other than my sunnah is not from me. Anyone who desires and likes to do other than my sunnah is not from me. So this hadith teaches us that marriage is from whose sunnah? Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sunnah of what? The previous, the previous messengers, based on the ayah that I gave you. But if the person, he is scared that he's going to commit zina. He's scared. He's on the brink of committing zina. He is worried for himself. Then this individual, it is obligatory on him or her to get married. The person has to get married. It now pushes towards what? Al wujub. It's obligatory on you. And that is what Al Imam Al Imam Al Shawkani said. He said, Lianna zina haram wa kadalika ma yu addi ilay. Zina is it haram? Is zina haram? It is. 
and anything that might lead to zina is also it's haram, right? So you not getting married is going to lead you to zina, so it's haram as well. It's going to lead you to zina, so it's haram. وما هو مقدمة له فمن خشي على نفسه الوقوع في هذا وجب عليه رفعه عن نفسه. Anyone who is scared that he might fall into zina, it is obligatory, it is binding on him to push it off himself. To do whatever means that you can take to get married, then do so. فإن كان لا يندفع إلا بالنكاح وجب عليه ذلك. What about the person who hasn't got the ability? The ability is not there. He can't. But he wants to. He doesn't have the ability to get married. He wants to get married. What should he do? The Sharia has only given one solution, brothers and sisters. One. Nothing, le- nothing more, nothing less. If a person can't get married, and he has the desires, then what should he do? He should fast. Based on the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he said, that the Prophet said, Ya ma'ashar al-shababi, youths, man istata'a minkum ul-ba'ata, falihtazawwaj. Whichever of you has the ability to get married, he has the ability to what? His ability to get, he has the ability to get married, let him get, him, let him get married. Marry. Why? Because marriage will allow you to lower your gaze. And it will protect your private part for you. The one who doesn't have the ability. Now, the scholars, they've discussed this hadith a lot. What does it mean he doesn't have the ability? He has the physical ability. He's got desires. Physically he's able. But he doesn't have the financial ability. He doesn't have that. He's the one who's told to go to what? To fast. Why? فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ وِجَاءَ What does وِجَاءَ mean? Fasting castrates you. Castration means what? Castration means when they take the testicle out of the camel and the camel doesn't have no desires and it works. Anything will be put on it. People will move. It it doesn't have that period of time where generally the camel becomes transgressive. He becomes serious, disobedient because of the desires and the hormone of the camel. So what they do is they take that testicle out and he doesn't have the desires. If you fast, fasting will do that to you. It will get rid of that desires. We've covered the first point. What have we covered? We've covered the first point. What was the first point that we covered? The ruling of marriage. We're now going to move on to the second one, which is ayun nisa'i khayrun. What woman is best to marry? What woman is best to marry? Anyone who wants to marry a woman, فَلْيَتَحَرَّ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ Handpick the woman that you want to marry. Choose her wisely. Think about it. Ponder over it. Look at it. Many people, they get married. Based on what? Based on qualities that they saw on this, in this person? No. They get married to this person based on desires. My father, he used to say, when you're young, your brain is in your waist. Is in your what? Meaning you're full of desires. So that's what you think with. You don't have a brain to think with. So all you think is with desires. As long as she's a woman, I will marry her. And then the brain moves to the head as you go older. You have to look at this woman that you're going to marry. On what grounds? She's going to be the mother of your children. 
Do you see this woman being the mother of your children? Do you see her raising your children? Can you trust your children with her? Because what people forget and slips their mind is the woman that you choose is a right that your children have on you. The, children, the woman that you choose is a right that your children have on you. What woman did you make them your, their father and uh, their mother? What woman did you choose to make that their mother? A righteous woman? A disobedient woman? This is something you have to take into consideration. Well, a lot of people, two, three years into the marriage, they regret the person that they got married to. Why? Why did I get married to this person? Because now the desire is gone. You're thinking straight. At the beginning, think straight. Who do you want to be with? Look at the qualities that was prescribed by the Messenger. There are many qualities, but we don't have much time to go through all of them. But these are some of them, or the most important. The first one is and takuna that dini. And takuna that dini. She should be a woman of religion. A woman of deen. She, she should be religious, steadfast, upright. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala radiallahu ta'ala anhu it's found in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim and Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah and Nasai that the Messenger said tunkahu al-mar'atu li arba'in a woman is generally married for four when people marry a woman Muslim, non-Muslim, it doesn't matter they marry the woman for one of these four reasons First one is Limaliha, her money. He looks at her, she says, he says, Wallahi, she's rich. This woman, she's got money. She's got a big purse. She's got a big purse. She's got money. So he marries her for the wealth that she has. The number two, Wali Hasabiha, her lineage. She's the, she's the daughter of the royal family. Or she's from a prestigious household. Wali Jabali ha her beauty. He sees her and he's amazed with the way she looks. Wali Dini ha her religion. Those are the four reasons. Look what the Prophet then said. The messenger said. Go for the woman of religion, the religious one. May your hands be filled with dust. May your hand, may your hands be filled with dust. If you marry this woman with religion, you will prosper. But if you don't, you wouldn't. Well, Idalika brothers, when you get married and you have a religious wife, a pious wife, Wallahi, generally you find at the times of conflict, at a time of hardship in your relationship, she will fall back to the Quran and the Sunnah. The Iman fluctuates, la shak, but there's some things she wouldn't let go of. Are you with me? Deen is there. When you're away, brothers, and you come back home, your children are learning the Quran and memorizing this and studying this and your household she will make sure it's a religious household because she is righteous she is upright very important this quality is very vital deen religion with the deen brothers comes great qualities and many people are having fights many conflicts between spouses when you look at it one of the two is not practicing the deen you tell her who are you talking to 
She doesn't understand that language. It doesn't press a nerve. Taqillah doesn't mean anything to her. Are we all together? What type of wife are you married to if your discussion is pray the salah? No, I'm not going to pray. What type of children are you going to raise in that kind of household? Something to be worried about, right? You're going to have a problem here. The second quality that the scholars mention is an takuna waludan. That she's a woman who bears children. She's childbearing. She has children, a lot of children. Now this is a question. You've just seen a sister. How can you choose her on the quality of being childbearing? She, she, she doesn't have children. How can you choose her on this quality? Huh? You look at her immediate family members. Her mother's got 12 kids. Her sister, her older sister's got 15, 20 kids. She's from a household. They have children. Marry her. It's a good quality. Walidarika, the messenger said to us, Marry the woman who is childbearing. And she's also loving. She loves her husband. She always wants to beautify herself for him. She's always trying to make herself look special for him. Loving. And also she is what? She's also walud, childbearing. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, the day of judgment, I'm going to boast in front of all of the nations. Look at my ummah. Don't, brothers and sisters, strip this from the Messenger wasallam. He's saying to you, I want to boast the day of judgment in front of all nations. I want to say, look how big and large my nation is. So don't take that away from our messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This quality that he wants. The third quality that the scholars mention is an takuna bikran that she's a virgin. Why virgin? They say the reason. This is the following reason. Hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah. Jabir, the great noble companion. He was a companion and his father was a companion. He came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said to him, Tazawajtu, I am married. I got married, O Messenger of Allah. I married, O Messenger of Allah. So when he said this to the Prophet, another narration says that the Prophet said to him, Atazawajta ya Jabir. Jabir, did you get married? Ya Jabir, tazawajta. Jabir, did you get married? He said, yes, I did. The Prophet said, Bikran. I'm a Bikrun, a Bikr, I'm a Sayyib, a virgin or a non-virgin. Qultu Thayyibun. I said, I married a non-virgin. Then the messenger said to him, Fahalla. Why didn't you not marry? Bikran, a virgin. You would play with her. The scholars they underline this term, you play with her. When the woman, <coughs> generally speaking, she's a virgin and she hasn't come into contact with no other man, she comes with the quality of loving. She becomes attached to her husband. Because all of the world is to, to her is this. She tends to want to be in a marriage. She's more attached to the husband. And she's more what? Connected to him. And loving. Whereas the one who's either widowed or divorced. Another divorce or another broken relationship may not affect her as much as it would 
the virgin because she's gone through it. That's generally speaking. And there are always exceptions. Like in Jabir responded. He gave his reason. And he said, Inna li akhawat. I have daughters, sisters. I have sisters, O Messenger of Allah. فَخَشِيتُ I was scared. أَن تَدْخُلَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَهُنَّ I was scared that if I married a young wife, a, 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 a virgin, that she would fall with my sisters and be part of them. I wanted a woman who would be over them, supervising their situation. Because remember, his father died, and his father left all of his sisters with him, a Jabir. So I married an older woman so she can take care of my sisters for me. That's why I did it. Then the messenger said, Then the issue is as you said. Meaning this is better now. What you did was better. The scholars, they take from that, that it's generally better to marry a virgin because that is what he proposed at the beginning. But then because there was a maslaha, there was an external benefit, an external reason in the situation of Jabir, then for him it was better to marry a what? A non-virgin. Are we all together brothers? So yes, there are times that marrying a non-virgin is actually better than actually marrying a, a virgin. But generally speaking, it's better to marry a virgin. Now we move on to the third point, inshallah ta'ala. Huh? No, no, th third point. Third chapter. Ayyur rijali khayrun. Which man is best to marry? This is for the sisters now. What type of man can you make the father of your children? Which man can you trust yourself and your children with? Can you see yourself being with this man for the rest of your life? Can you see this man becoming the father of your children? All of that, take it into consideration. Don't think, and this is common, you want to get married because you want to leave your parents' house and you're sick and tired of always being told what to do and what not to do and you just want to run away and you throw yourself into the hands of a man. Don't do that. Think. S observe. Scrutinize. What type of person do you want to make your husband? The woman, the benefits that she has is that she's not alone in making that decision. She's aided. She's supported. And the woman, subhanallah, in our religion, she's protected. She's taken care of. She's not abandoned. She runs around. Islam has really taken it serious when it comes to the affairs of women. That the woman should be taken care of. She should be helped. She should be aided. She should be supported. Before she gets married, it is her father's job. It is her father's role to take care of her. Once she gets married and her father passes her over to her husband, it then becomes the husband's responsibility to take care of this woman. And once she has her son, she, got, she gets her husband and her son to take care of her. She's always been taken care of. So that moment of choosing this husband, this spouse, this partner, the sister should consult her guardian, her father, her brothers. They can see right through this brother. See right through him. And a lot of the times you find the sisters who aren't taken care of, looked after, Generally speaking, you find they're either one of two. They don't have a father. They don't probably have a brother. And so this man is taking advantage of her. 
He has nobody to account him. Or her father is absent from her life. He's there, but he's absent. He doesn't care. And so she then endures a lot of abuse. So it's important that you take and you play a role in your daughter's life. You choose her husband with her, with her. It's a joint effort with her contribution and your contribution to come to the best person for her. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look what he said. Ida ja'akum. If there comes to you, O oh Father, if there comes to you, man tardawna deenahu, the person you are pleased with his religion, a man whose religion you're pleased with, wa khuluqahu and his manners and his etiquettes, his akhlaq and his deen, you can't say anything about it. The Prophet said, فَأَنْكِحُوهُ Marry him off. No other qualities after that. Does this man have religion? Yes. Does he have deen? Yes. Pay and ponder on this hadith. The Prophet said, فَأَنْكِحُوهُ Marry him. Marry that man off to your daughter. He knocks on the door. He asks you for your daughter. Nowadays, people don't need to ask you. We're in a life and in a climate People snatch your daughter away from you. It's a reality. With social media, the man who comes and knocks on your door has shown you utmost respect. Don't get angry at him. Pat him on the shoulder. Show him that the step that he has taken is an honorable state. Not many people are doing this. You look at his deen. You look at his akhlaq. If he has these two, the Prophet said, فَأَنْكِعُوا Marry him off to your daughter. What about if you say, oh, he's not from this country, or he's this and that. What about if you use those arguments? Or he's not from our own hometown, and our own village. Huh? A lot of uncles and fathers are going to get angry, huh? He's not from your hometown, he's not from your village. You've not seen him before, he's from another ethnicity, or what not. For those purposes, you turn, you turn him down. What will happen? If you don't marry him off to that man or that person who has those two, then great fitna will occur on this earth. Great fitna. Great trial and tribulation. And wallahi, I saw it. I saw it. There was a father who was a good brother. Sahibuddin. Person of religion. Person of etiquette. Proposed for his daughter. From the same country as well. But just not from the same town. He asked for his daughter with utmost respect. And so the father said to him, No, we don't marry. We've never did this before. Ah. We've never, we've never done this before. Please, sorry, go. Time didn't go far. The girl, she got pregnant from a non-Muslim. It wasn't too long. This is in the UK. She got pregnant from a non-Muslim. And then he looked for the brother. We're looking for the best religion. So it's important, brothers. The deen of Allah Azza was made for a reason. Okay? It will help us, it will support us. Now I want to speak about the fourth point. Offering one's daughter to a virtuous man. You have a daughter or you even have a sister. And you know a virtuous brother, a righteous brother. Can you present your sister or your daughter to him? Is that belittling? Is that bad? Is that humiliating your daughter? What does the Sharia say about that? You see a brother who is righteous. His deen is very high. Nowadays you don't find that, do you? It's rare. So you came across one of those brothers. 
Every Fajr is praying with you in the masjid. Salah, ta'a, obedience, upright. His, his words, his honesty, he's amazing. And you have a sister. She's in the house. You ain't going to get married to her. She's your sister. Or your daughter. Can you go and offer your daughter to him? Yes, you can. Abdullah ibn Umar, he said, Abdullah ibn Umar, he said, Anna Umar ibn al-Khattab, his father Umar ibn al-Khattab, Hina ta'ayyamat Hafsa bint Umar. Hafsa ibn Umar, she's the daughter of who? She is the daughter of Umar radiallahu anhu. Her husband died. His name was called Khunais ibn Hudafat al-Sahmi. He's a brother of Abdullah ibn Hudafat al-Sahmi. He died. So when he died, he died in Medina. Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, I came to Uthman ibn Affan. Umar came to Uthman ibn Affan and he said to him, فَعَرَضْتُ عَلَيْهِ Hafsa." Do you want to marry my daughter Hafsa? Who is he saying this to? Uthman. Uthman then said, سَأَنظُرُ فِي أَمْرِي I'm going to look into my affairs. I'm going to revise my situation. I'm going to look into it. فَلَبِثْتُ لَيَالِي Umar said, I remained for a couple of days. ثُمَّ لَقِيَ ثُمَّ لَقِيَنِي And then he came back to me. He came back to me with a response. فَقَالَ He then said to me, said to me قَدْ بَدَى لِي what it seems to be apparent, what seems to be appropriate in my situation right now is that I, should get, I shouldn't I should get married. It is not appropriate. It is not the right time for me to get married. Umar then said, Aba Bakrin. I bumped into Abu Bakr. I came into contact with Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr is Siddiq. Fakultu I then said to him, in Shi'ta, if you want, Zawaj to Ka, I will marry you off to my daughter Hafsa. I will marry you off to my daughter Hafsa. Fasamata Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr just went quiet. No response. And he never came back with any response. Falam shay'an. He never said anything in response. He didn't say yes or no. Uthman, what did he do? Uthman came back and said, I don't see it appropriate for me to get married at this particular moment. But as for Abu Bakr, and he just went. This pierced into the heart of Umar. He started to have something towards Abu Bakr. And this is very important, brothers. This is a man's daughter. He presented, this takes a lot of courage. He's so good in you and he saw he presented his daughter to you. You need to take it very serious. If you're going to accept it, accept it. And if not, say no. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, like Abu Bakr didn't respond back. And Abu Bakr didn't respond back because he knew something. Well, some, there was a reason why he didn't. He knew something. That's what made him silent. وَكُنْتُ أَجِدُ عَلَيْهِ مِنِّي عَلَىٰ عُثْمَانِ and Abu Umar said, I had something in my heart towards him. Not Uthman, but I had something towards Abu Bakr. For what he did to me. He didn't get back to me. I presented my daughter to him. I offered my daughter to him. And he never got back to me. فَلَبِثْتُ لَيَالِي I stayed for a couple of nights. ثُمَّ خَطَبَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The messenger married her. صلى الله عليه وسلم فَأَنْكَحْتُ إِيَّاهُ I married him off. To the Prophet, I married her off to the Prophet فَلَاقِيَنِي أَبُو بَكَرٍ Abu Bakr came to me now. فَقَالَ لِي He then said to me, لَعَلَّكَ وَجَدْتَ عَلَيَّ حِينَ عَرَضْتَ عَلَيَّ حَفْصَةَ فَلَمْ أَرْجِعِ إِلَيْكَ شَيْئًا I know you took something in your heart to me. I mean, you, took some, you, took a, you took into your heart a grudge towards me after you presented your daughter Hafsa to me and I never got back to you. صح? And then Umar said, Naam, of course. Of course I did. Abu Bakr even said, فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَمْنَعُنِي The reason that I didn't give you an answer was because 
and I didn't get back to you was because and you couldn't to I knew I had knowledge and Rasulullah the messenger mentioned her so the Prophet was interested in married Hafsa and I was not one and I was not one to spread the Prophet's news. Another benefit that I want to take from here, which is brothers. Sometimes a person may not say to you, don't tell this secret. They may not say that to you. Or they may not even tell you that it's a secret. But they mention it to you, even then don't tell anyone. Especially if he says, come, I want to tell you something. He didn't tell you it's a secret, but he said, come, let me tell you something. And he takes you into a corner and he whispers it to you. And then later you say, but you didn't tell me it was a secret. I took you to the corner, I whispered. What else did he think it was? So the believer doesn't spread what he's been entrusted with. And again, another benefit. Abu Bakr didn't say also what? He didn't say yes, because if he would, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to get married to her. And he didn't say no, because he did want to get married to her. Are we all together? If it, the Prophet didn't get married, he would want to get married to her. Are we all together, brothers? And that's another benefit that we take from there. That some people, sometimes you offer them food. And out of humbleness and humility, they'll say to you, I don't want it. Akhi, your stomach is growling. Your stomach is making so much noise, you're hungry. Of course you're hungry. So you combine between lying and hunger. Are we all together about this? Don't say, I don't want it. Because you do want it. Or you do need it. So he said to him, I didn't accept it. Point number five. Looking at the proposed spouse, the woman that you want to get married to, looking at her. And what is it that you can look at? What is permissible for you to look at? I ain't going to go into all of that. What can you see and what can't you see? If a man proposes to a woman, it is legislated, it is permissible for him. And to look at her qabla, before he even proposes to her. Are we all together, brothers? Before he even proposes to her, he can look at her. Ah. Li hadith Muhammad ibn Maslama. Especially based on the hadith of Muhammad ibn. Muhammad ibn Maslama. He said, Khatabtum ra'atan. I proposed to a woman. Faj'altu atakhabba laha. I was hiding from her. Hatta nadartu ilayha fi nakhlin laha. I hid on a tree. Just look at her while she was in the house. Just see. She doesn't know. Are we all together, brothers? And the scholars, they mentioned this type of looking is the best. Because she's unaware. She's normal like herself. Are we all together, brothers? But if you tell her, I want to see you, it goes against two things. Number one, most likely she will not show you her real self. Are you with me, brothers? And number two, you're telling her to get rid of her shyness. Her father raised her to cover herself up from her, the opposite gender. And he nurtured her in that way. And now you want to see her take her niqab off, for example? Are we all together? So, those two reasons, it's best to see her without her knowledge. And we'll see what the wisdom behind that is. Muhammad ibn Maslama, when he did this, the people around him, they said to him, Ataf'alu hadha? Are you going to do this? وَأَنْتَ صَاحِبُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ And you're the Prophet's companion? Are you going to look at a woman from the top of a tree? 
and you are the student of the Prophet and the companion of the Messenger alayhi salatu salam and then he said سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam say إِذَا أَلْقَى اللَّهُ فِي قَلْبِ مْرِئٍ This is before even proposing to the sister if Allah throws in your heart the desire to marry a particular sister خِطْبَ تَمْرَأَةٍ to marry a woman فَلَا بَأْسَ there is no problem أَنْ يَنْظُرَ إِلَيْهَا to look at her there's no problem here if you look at the hadith the messenger he said look at her how long can you look at sorry how much can you look at it's not mentioned and there's became a big difference some scholars they said the face and the hands and the feet only a group of scholars they said nope her neck her face, her hair, her two hands, and her two feet. And another group of scholars, they said you can look at her in her totality. Ibn Hazm and others. That which seems appropriate is when she's at home and she wears her abaya, her neck, her face, and her hair, and her two feet. Sorry, her two hands and her two feet, that is enough. That's all that brother needs to see. What's the wisdom in looking at her? What's the hikmah of doing this? Al-Mughir ibn Shu'bah, he said, Ataytu al I came to the Prophet. Fadakartu lahu, I told him, Imra'atan akhtubuha, a woman that I'm going to propose to. فَقَالَ The Prophet said, اِذْهَبْ فَانْظُرْ إِلَيْهَا Go and look at her. Why? فَإِنَّهُ أَجْدَرُ أَنْ يُؤْدَمَ بَيْنَكُمَا This will bring about affection. This will bring about what? It will bring about affection. You know what woman you married. You know how she looks. There's no surprises. Once you marry her, affection. That's important because one of the three pillars that marriage stands on is what brothers the three A's if you're married and you don't know these three A's you should be in trouble yeah brothers these three A's appreciation affection and attention these are the three pillars of marriage <laughs> the three pillars of marriage appreciation a woman needs a man who appreciates her she needs appreciation whenever she talks what do you know why are you talking with us women don't like that it destroys them whenever she comes with something and she says something you belittle it she needs to be appreciated. Are we all together, brothers? Appreciation. That's Ruknul Awwal. That's the first pillar. What's the second pillar? They need affection. What do they need? Affection. Affectionate husband. See, affectionate is more than sexual intimacy, it's broader. Are we all together, brothers? Sexual intimacy is just physical. Intimacy is also that plus the heart. You're talking to the person's heart. Intimate. That's the second pillar. What is it? Huh? Affection. And the third one is attention. Attention. When she talks, you listen. You give her attention. You know what she's... Sometimes I agree with you, brothers. that the wife will tend to bring up the same story it's like she hasn't told you before and she'll tell you again and just make it look like it's the first time you heard it wow really is that what happened it's good for you to do that brothers it helps you the food that you'll be given will be nice 
your house will be warm you have a good marriage these things brothers if you do it you won't be leaving the house with two different shoes so for you to enjoy your marriage these are the thalata, arkani thalata, the three pillars okay brothers these three pillars so looking at the woman the hadith here told us affection that comes from it maybe like Muhammad told us one of the pillars is found now we're going to move on to the sixth point which is the proposal the proposal the khitbah what does khitbah mean what does the proposal mean it means talabu zawaj you request you propose for marriage you request for marriage from this woman from the well-known ways and what is that to go to the girl's father or her guardian and whoever's in charge I will speak about that in the Aqdu Nikah it is to request for this girl's hand that's what you do if a, the family say we agree we've accepted you brother to us you are what you're accepted get yourself ready bring your family members you have to make this official and we get this date is going to be the nikah and this is going to be this time is going to be the wedding get ready that is the proposal you've proposed many people they think the khitbah makes it allowed for you to to just hold hands and go to the chicken and chip shop eat food together in the restaurant put the food in each other's mouth are we all together no you're nothing to each other it's just an agreement the family have accepted you they can come back from it and they can say look we found someone better than you they can easily say that if they want to but what is the what is the value of the khitbah if it's nothing then what value does it hold yeah there's a value it holds there's a benefit in it which is at that time of the approval no other man can approach her it's prohibited Shara'an. the prophet وسلم, he prohibited وسلم, the messenger وسلم, he prohibited and he forbade selling against one another your brother selling a merchandise he's selling a product He's got a customer in front of him and you whisper into the ear of the customer you say I'll give it to you for a better price and you walk away Haram. you're not allowed to sell against one another you can't do that to each other and it's also prohibited and it's forbade for a brother to propose to a sister that is already been pro proposed to by another brother another brother has approached her father he's been approved you're not allowed to come you can't say don't worry how much is he going to give you for the dowry <laughs> La ilaha illallah. Uh, double i will give you what i'll give you double where did he say you're going to live in this country ha huh? I'm going to make you live in this country. And then you start putting yourself forward like that. It is haram. Also, what falls in this point that I need to mention is a sister, and this is common. Brothers, be very cautious. And sisters, be cautious and fear Allah Azza wa Jalla. Which is a sister who is in her iddah from a talaq raj'i. She's mu'taddun min talaqin raj'i. She's in her idda from a man who divorced her once or twice. And she's in that period of time. All he needs to say is what? Raja'atuki, I took you back. That's all he needs to say. The husband. 
at that period of time, you can't propose to her. It's haram for you to propose to that sister. It's haram. You're not allowed to. In any way, shape or form. Again, it is the sister whose husband can still take her back. And the idda hasn't finished. He's able to take her back. Okay? Because this man is still her husband. Be careful here. All he needs to just say is, Raja'atu ki. We're all together, brothers. But what about if the sister, she's in the idda of a talaqun ba'inun. This man is divorced her three times. Ba'inun at al-kubra. He said to her, you're divorced, and you're divorced, and you're divorced. He divorced her three times. He finished it. Nothing left for him. But she's in the idda. The scholars, they say that he is not allowed to propose to her بالتصريح. He can't come up to her and say to her, I'm the one, inshallah. I propose to you, sister, can I marry you once you finish your idda? He can't say that to her. But he can do what the scholars uh, called um, التعريض. He can do indirect. He can do what? He can do indirect. To that sister who's in a this husband can never take her back. If the idda finishes, he can, he, she, he's finished it all. But she still has an idda to, to see whether she, there's a child in her, right? So she has to wait for her. her thalatha tuhr, the three tahara. I mean, the three hayd, whichever opinion you take. Are we all together, brothers? In that moment, the man is allowed to do indirect. Let's see you around and uh, things like that, which is tarid, is not direct. And the evidence for that is the statement of Allah, Surah Al Baqarah, Ayah 235, where Allah says, Wala junaha alaykum. There's no problem and there's no harm. Fima arratum. Arratum is what? Tarid. Indirect. There's no problem for you to indirect. Are we all together, brothers? Indirect to that sister is not a problem. Min nisa'i aknantum fi anfusikum. Now we're going to go into number seven. Huh? Let's see you around, and you deserve to be treated better. Wahakada. Ta'rid is not direct. It's indirect. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go into Aqdu Nikah. Aqdu. Aqdu Nikah. The marriage contract. Which is number seven. There is two pillars that have to be found. It stands on two pillars. Number one, Idnul Wali, the permission of the guardian. A woman cannot marry herself off. The permission of the guardian. It's, it's obligatory. Based on the ayah, marry them off. What did Allah say? Marry them? Who's been spoken to here? The guardians. Allah said to the guardians, guardians. Marry them off. Marry the women off. They can't do it themselves. The guardian does it for her. He marries her off. Like in what? With the permission of their with the permission of their families. Aisha said, Radiallahu ta'ala anha, that the messenger said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ayyamam ra'atim. Any woman. The wali, the guardian did not marry her off. This woman, she's not married. She ran with him. He married her. Stole her from her father. She's married to him. Her nikah is batil. Null and void. 
فَنِكَاحُهَا بَاطِلٌ This prophet said second time, the nikah is null and void. فَنِكَاحُهَا بَاطِلٌ Third time, the prophet said her nikah. And this contract, null and void. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهَا If he had sexual intercourse with her, فَلَهَا مَهْرُهَا She has a dowry. Just because the contract was null and void, that doesn't mean there's no dowry. Oh, there's a dowry. فَلَهَا مَهْرُهَا بِمَا أَصَابَ مِنْهَا فَإِنِ اسْتَأْجَرُوا If a woman doesn't have a willy, she's a without a willy, she's a new Muslim, she doesn't have a willy. فَالسُلْطَانُ وَلِيُّ مَنْ لَا وَلِيَّ لَهُ Then the guardian for that woman is there, the leader, the court. If they don't have all of that, then for instance, the imam, وَمَا إِلَى ذَلِكَ are we all together? He's the wali of that, of that woman. He marries her off. No circumstances can a woman marry herself off in any way, shape or form. Question here now. If a woman gets married without the permission of her guardian, like many people have done, and then a child comes from this, which many cases happen, is this child wali zina? Is this child born from outside wedlock? No. There's no difference of opinion. It's a consensus that this child is attributed to the father and it's legit. It's a legitimate child. Pay attention to this. Because this nikah is called nikahu shubha. What is it called? Nikahu shubha. But if he is told the ruling, He's told, you're not in a nikah. By the way, there's no need for divorce. You just say, go your way, just go your way. Nothing was here in the first place. I remember there was a situation where two parties found out that their nikah was done in that way. They found out the ruling. And so the sheikh said, go separate ways. Uh, and if you want, nikah can be done for you now, bring the guardian. The woman said, um, or we just go our separate ways. He, he said yes. Uh, the sheikh said yes. And if you do both want to get married, then bring your wali. She's like, no, alhamdulillah. <laughs> I want to go home. I don't want to be with this man. Are you sure, sheikh? Uh, the point here is that there's no divorce needed. It is not a, it's not a nikah. Not a nikah. The Hanifi Madhab they say it's permissible وما إلى ذلك and it's not an evidence for you. If there comes a delil from the Quran or the Sunnah brothers, however noble that Imam is, however great he is, however respected he is, you cannot place his speech in direct opposition to the statement of Allah and His Messenger. Very serious. Allah and His Messenger takes precedence over every and anybody. إِذَا جَاءَ نَهْرُ اللَّهِ بَطَلَ نَهْرُ مِعْقَلْ The scholars, they mention this proverb, which is that مِعْقَلْ was a man. He used to have a little Alhamdulillah He used to have a little valley. And a little valley He will charge people for the water, give money. Because he's the one who cut the valley. He's the one who made the little uh, well. He'll take money for the machine and everything he put there. He'll say, pay. Allah sent rain down. And it made a lake. Are the people going to go pay for Mi'qal's water? Huh? If the Quran and the Sunnah comes, there's no need for the statement of anybody after that. Are we all together, brothers? The second pillar which the contract of marriage stands on is حضور shuhud. There has to be the presence of witnesses. There has to be witnesses. There has to be witnesses. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا نكاح, there is no nikah إلا بوليين except with a guardian. وشاهدي عدل and two 
two trustworthy witnesses, two reputable witnesses. It can't be any, it can't be Qusayrun wa Uwayrun wa Thalithu laysa fi khayrun. It can't be any random brother. It has to be somebody reputable, someone honorable, someone who has integrity, reliable, upright, steadfast. Those are two pillars. We're now going to move on to the eighth point, which is Wujubu sti'danil mar'ati qabla zawaj. The obligation of getting the woman's approval before marriage. Yay, serious here. The obligation of getting the woman's approval before marriage. A woman has to be sorted permission. Her permission needs to be taken from her. The guardian has to talk to his daughter and take her permission. The evidence for that is the hadith of Abu Hurairah that the messenger said لا تنكح الأيم حتى تستأمر The virgin she is not married off unless with her permission I'm sorry the Ayyim is the widow the widow I mean the divorcee the non-virgin she is not married unless her permission is sought the father will say to her, Dad, do you want to marry? The non-virgin, because she's been through marriage, she'll be direct and say, Daddy, I want him. Ha, she's, because she's been through that. So her permission is sought. She's asked. وَلَا تُنْكَحُ الْبِكْرُ حَتَّى تُسْتَأْذَنْ And the virgin, her permission is sought. But remember the virgin, when her father comes and tells her about a brother that wants to get married to her, she blushes and she turns away. She's shy. She doesn't know how to talk to, she doesn't know what to say to her father. She starts, those were the good old days. Those were the, those were the good old days. The blessed days, the glory days. Yeah, sahih. Right now they would, wouldn't let their father finish the sentence. How did you know what was in my heart? And subhanAllah, it's this concept of shyness that has been killed, wallahi. Hatta the one who is shy, people are belittling her for being shy. Belittling her. The Messenger sallallahu said, alayhi salatu wasalam, al-haya'u la yati illa bil khair. Shyness does not come with except good. Shyness. It only brings about good. And so now the girl was forced Come on social media, show yourself, show a bit of skin. Come on, what are you shy for? Everybody's out there, everyone's doing it. Everyone, everyone. Are we all together? It's sad. It's really sad. It's sad. So the Prophet said that the virgin, her permission is sought. So the father doesn't just tell her, my daughter, you're married. <laughs> Inshallah ta'ala, go to your husband. No, it's haram. It's haram. Khansa bintu Khudamin al Ansariya. Listen to this story. Because wallahi, these are the issues. Because of cultural reasons that people do this in Western countries, in the countries that we're from, liberal, secular, free societies, they use this to demonize Islam. I say, look, when really this is what? Culture. If you look at our forefathers and our parents, they will tell you they got married. They were married. And they're mature women. They were married off. I'm going to make dua against you. Or I'm going to do dua for you. Which one do you want? Shall I curse you for the rest of your life? No, daddy. Don't curse me. Hey, marry this man. And she goes and she marries him. Are we all together? And so when people see this and they attach this to Islam and they say this is what Islam propagates, this is what Islam says, this is evil. It makes the religion look bad. And it really isn't a part of the deen. This is a what? 
It's a cultural practice that people are doing. So Khansa bint Khudamin al Ansariya, she said, and Abba has a wajah, her father married her off. She was a, a non virgin. She disliked this action of her father. Ah. She came to the Messenger. The Prophet, he reversed the nikah. Who? Her name, the Sahabiya. Her name was Khansa binti Khudamin al Ansariya. Khansa bintu Khudam. What did the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? The Messenger reversed alayhi salatu wasalam and he, he nullified. He annulled the whole contract and he terminated it like it never happened. Abdullah ibn Abbas and he said, Anna jariyatan bikran atati nabiyya a virgin girl came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فذكرت and she mentioned له أن أباها زوجها وهي كارها her father married her off and she was not for it she did not consent to it she did not approve of it فخيرها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the messenger said what do you want now what's your choice what do you want to do you want to go for it or do you want to let go he gave her a choice even though she'd been married off it's your choice he did. You can't say, oh, it's too late now, just, just follow your father. If, uh, no. It's your choice. Do you want it now or do you not want it? That's our religion. And I want you to remember, brothers, Islam liberally, liberated women. Because at that time, who would want to hear the woman, what she has to say? Women were inherited just like products. You know how money was divided and it was shared are we all together if the father died his women were part of the the products that were inherited the women had nothing the boy would marry his father's wives in the arab culture at that time before islam she was inherited whether she liked it or not she, she doesn't have no say nothing this is the liberation that we're for are we all together, brothers? This is what we want. This is what has in it masalih dunya, the benefits of this world and the hereafter. Anything other than this is destruction. It's destruction. Now we're going to go into the uh, ninth point, which is khutbatun nikah, the speech for the wedding ceremony. Before the contract. I mean, before the, uh, the contract is made, before the ma'akd, the, the contract and is made, it is recommended that the khutbatul haja is done. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiru, wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina, wa min sayyiati a'malina, man yahdihi allahu fala mudillalah, wa man yudlil fala hadiyalah. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء you know that you have to say it like that. Wanisa a because there's a tanween on the Hamza. Wattaqullah alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu attaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuti'illaha wa rasulahu faqad faza fawzan azima amma ba'du fa inna asdaq al hadith kitab Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. That should be said. Oh, it's recommended, highly recommended. Before the contract of marriage is done, the Sheikh 
for whoever is doing it or the father he should memorize the what it's called this is called the what khutbatul haja in this particular wording that i mentioned highly recommend it that is said like this other people they have their own other ways of but this is the one that you say highly recommend it it's highly it's highly recommended to do a little lecture and a reminder have a problem no problem huh? no problem uh, no problem Hard. and the, the, the paper is, is a formality it's not a problem that doesn't still fulfill the conditions that are needed these people the two witnesses have to see the ijab and the the qabul the giving and the accepting huh? they have to see that are we all together good it, now we're going to go into the tenth point which is istihbab tahni'ati bin nikah the that is recommended to congratulate the people who've just now got married the new weds especially the brother because your brothers you're going to be in the brother's side and the sisters are going to be with the sister so it's recommended to congratulate the person and there's a prophetic way of congratulating it's not like hey Allah mabarik no no there's a way to say it and there's wordings that you say you say barakallahu lakum barakallahu lakum may Allah place baraka in it for you both Allah's blessing for you both wa baraka alaykum and may you be blessed and may blessing be placed on you and may Allah ta'ala join you both fi khayrin in good the person says that sunnah these are things you need to learn and memorize you see our religion from the early beginning all of it starting the brother chose the right sister the sister she chose the right brother they all took it the right way they didn't hide behind this they went to the father and the father married them off so far anyone who follows this and the people are making dua for you your household what room does shaitan have are we all together brothers Where, where's he gonna squeeze in nowhere no we're gonna see more inshallah ta'ala Barakallahu lakum wa baraka alaykum wa jama'a baynakuma fi khayrin Now we're going to move on to the 11th point which is the dowry As-sadaq The dowry Allah tabarak wa ta'ala He commanded us in the Quran He said Wa atu nisa'a Allah wa ta'ala He commanded us and He said give to the women which women? whom you marry the women that you marry Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said give to them their dowries with a good heart give it to them in a good heart some men what do they say to the woman when they get married to her and she asks for the dowry me? Come on. Come on. What's this gold digging characteristics that you have? I'm providing for you, sister man. I'm taking care of your whole life. And now you're coming up to me and you're asking me for the dowry. He brings it up so much. He feels like, okay, I don't want it. Okay, I don't want it. How do you keep it? So she doesn't bring it up? No. 
Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, whether he instructs us and he commanded us. And wallahi, this, you, many of you think this might be a joke. But wallahi, there are men and women that are married. And I know, and there are many in number, 30 to 40 years. And this woman has not been given her dowry at all. And it hasn't been spoken about at all. And she cannot bring it up. She cannot dare to. He just gives her that look. And then every time he says, I've never said to you, I'm not going to give it to you. Yeah, you haven't, but you scared the living daylight out of her. Allah commanded the man, he said, nisa, Give the women. The women that you married. What do you give them? Sadduqatihinna nihla. Give them their diaries with a good heart. Some men, when they give it, they throw it at her, take it, man. And then a couple of hours, he's like, hey, what are we going to do with this money? He wants to share. So I would give the sisters a tip. Make sure he gives you the diary before you, be, you get together. Make sure he puts that diary and everything on the table so he doesn't give you that weird look later. Yeah? Take it from him early. Okay, brothers, I'm sorry. This is the reality. Sah. Take it from him early. Let him put it on the table. فَإِنْ طِبْنَ لَكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ مِّنْهُ نَفْسًا فَكُلُهُ هَنِئًا مَرِئًا If the woman then, what she does is, she's a nice, righteous, kind-hearted woman. You give it to her. You have to be a man, brothers. Give her the dowry. Say, it's yours. Don't ask it for it. It's her haqq. Don't take it from her. But if she finds it in her heart, kindness, and she wants to share it with you, then she's allowed to. It's her right. She can what? She can, but you can't terrorize her and scare her to take that dowry from her. Her dowry can, it doesn't necessarily have to be monetary or money, or, it doesn't have to be. It can be Umrah, it can be... Oh, of course, the dowry can be any time. It's debt. By the way, brothers, it's debt. If you don't pay that, it's debt that's on your neck. Be careful. It's debt which is on your neck. So this is the rights of the woman on the man. There's no limits. And no one can limit it. The dowry is what? It is limitless. She can say 20 billion if she wants to. And she can say, I want an apple. It's her choice. There's no limit. No one can restrict it in any way, shape or form. Like in the Sharia, what it did it do? It urged her. It recommended. It mentioned that it's better to lighten on the what? On the dowry. And not to make it very heavy and hard. Because at the end of the day, it's this man that you're going to live with. You don't want to destroy your husband. Before he even gets married to you, you cleansed him. You got, you went to hotel, move, throw this in. Let my friends know what day of the week it is. Let them know who came in town. Helicopters, everything, red carpet, everything. I want BBC News to broadcast my... And so, the brother the next day when he gets married to you, he's what? He's skin, he's looking at you like, what are we going to eat? What are we going to eat now? SubhanAllah, you cleansed him. And now you're going to suffer. Because all of that money you spent, other people ate it and they took it to the toilet. You, even you don't have it. I actually see the wise woman, the one who says, give me money and let's do a little wedding, simple wedding. Give me all of the money. The key is a aqila, more smarter than the one who says, I want a big hole. <laughs> the hole, you probably just gonna come there for five, ten minutes and leave. And myself as well. You've only done it for other people. So make it easy. And don't destroy your husband. And don't destroy your husband before he even becomes your husband. You don't want him walking sideways. And uh, having no money.
if the man, at this point I want to mention with the dowry, is if the man, he put other things into the contract. Ah. He put other th- contract. For instance, he said, I'm never going to get married again. I'm only going to be with you. I promise you. He writes a contract. She says, sign the dotted lines. And he signs it. He's not allowed to break that contract. Haram. If a woman has a contract with her husband that he can't marry another wife, just me, by myself, you and me, we're only going to play hide and seek, no one else. He's not allowed to say, I want to bring someone else. He has to follow that contract. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, أَحَقُّ مَا أَوْفَيْتُمْ مِنَ الشُّرُوطِ The biggest things that you can fulfill your contract with, the conditions, the biggest contract that you can fulfill is مَسْتَحَلَلْتُمْ بِهِ الْفُرُوجِ It is the ones that you got permitted the woman's honor. You had intimate relationship with this woman. She gave you the most valuable thing of hers. You have to fulfill the promises that come with it. That which you agree to. But we all together. That we're talking about there's conditions that are innate. They're already part of the marriage. Like for example, that you're going to provide for her. You're going to give her a roof over her head. Clothing and everything. That she doesn't have to state. It's already there. And if you don't fulfill it. Especially if you've taken her from her father's house. You've taken this woman from her father's house. And she was provided for. Food was given to her. Clothing and everything. And you bring her to her, your house. And you don't give her anything. Uh-huh. Yeah, I just spoke about Okay, good question. Two questions the brother asked. The brother said, Is it. I don't want to put words into your mouth. So correct me if I'm wrong in the way I state it. The first question is, um, can the woman basically disapprove and make a condition, something Allah made lawful? Yeah, we have evidence for that. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Ali ibn Abi Talib wanted to marry with Fatima, did the Prophet refuse? Yes, he refused, Alayhi Wasallam. The messenger refused to marry off, to allow Ali ibn Abi Talib to marry another woman with Fatima. Why? So Ali had an initial agreement with Fatima that he would never marry another woman. And if I'm not wrong, Ibn al-Qayyim mentions in his kitab, Zadul al-Ma'ad, fi hadi al-Khayr al-Ibad. The second question that you asked is, um, by the way, just as a side point, polygamy is not sunnah. It's mubah. Polygamy is not? It's not a sunnah. It's mubah. And I'll discuss that another time, inshallah. Ta'ala. Number two. The second question was? Yeah, there's, I mean, definitely, there's, there are, the brother asked, is there a difference of opinion from the scholars regarding whether the woman is allowed to uh, assert that condition? I mean, there is difference of opinion. Like, and as I said, the evidence alludes to that. that. So convince her in the beginning if you don't want to sign the dotted line. Say, look at this sister, man, what are you saying? Feel, you know, discuss it with her. But if you sign that contract, the believers are of their condition. You cannot break that condition. You made a, you made a promise, 
and you need to fulfill that promise. If she, if she uplifts that con condition from you, she uplifts that condition from you, then it's permissible. Now, of course it is. Last point is Mata yustahabbul al-bina Mata yustahabbul bina When is it preferred to begin cohabiting with one's wife? When is the best time to cohabit with your wife? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Tazawajani nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ama tazawajani rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi shawwal. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he married me in the month of shawwal. Wa bana bi fi shawwal. And he took me to his house as a bride during shawwal. فَأَيُّ نِسَاءِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم كَانَ أَحْضَى عِنْدَهُ مِنِّي And then Aisha said, And who amongst the Prophet's wives was dearest to him than I? Which one was the most dearer? Which woman did he love the most than I? It wasn't Aisha trying to say. Yeah? Aisha. Who did he love more? Aisha or Khadija, the Prophet? He was asked himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, Ayyu nas yahabu ilayka, who is the most beloved person, people to you, person to you? And they said, Aisha. And they said, Min al rijali from the men. And he said, Abuha, her father. Isn't that like a clear hadith? That's another khilaf. <laughs> Some scholars, they say that. They say, when Khadija was alive, it was Khadija. And when Khadija passed away, Aisha was the best. And he used to always remember Khadija. Now, does that mean he loved her more than Aisha? It doesn't show that. It just shows that he really loved Khadija. He really did. This, 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 there's a difference of opinion uh, here. But other than Khadija, he did love Aisha the most. You all know the famous story of when the Messenger وسلم, he boycotted all of his nine wives for 29 nights. He stayed away from all of them, left them, walked away from them. So Umar anhu heard. When he heard that the Messenger وسلم, is in the masjid and he left all of his knife, all of his wives. All of his wives. The first thing that he did was he went to Umar. He went to Umm Salama. He said, Umm Salama, what are you guys doing? What are you doing to the Prophet وسلم? And he tried to tell her off. And she said, Umar, out of all of the things that you could do, you are now putting your nose into the relationship between me and the messenger? Is that what you want to do? Get in our lives? And she got upset with him and she said, leave. Omar became angry. And then she added something else on it. She said, if you really want to talk to somebody, go to your own daughter, Hafsa. For verily she talks back to the Prophet. Are we all together, brothers? Not that I'm encouraging sisters to talk back to their husbands. I am not endorsing that and I'm not encouraging that. But our Prophet sometimes went through that. Are we all together? And now am I endorsing it? I'm not encouraging that. A sister should respect her husband and not speak back to him uh, anyways he came to Hafsa and look what he said to Hafsa he said Hafsa don't let it fool you what Aisha does to the Prophet for verily he loves her so much he will overlook 
some of her actions, that which she will not overlook for you. Who said that? Who is he saying that to? His own daughter. So everyone knew he loved Aisha more, right? It was what? Common knowledge. It was what? Lacking. That should never show in your what? In your actions. Whichever of your wives that you love the most, it shouldn't show in your actions. You should be fair. It should be one-sided. Shouldn't be? You shouldn't be one-sided. وَكَانَتْ تَسْتَحِبُّ أَنْ يَدْخُلَ نِسَاؤُهَا فِي شَوَّالِ And the hadith says, and Aisha preferred that the women of her family would enter the house of their husbands as brides during the months of Shawwal. Aisha, she used to prefer that. That if you are marrying a man, that you enter onto him as a wife in the month of Shawwal. So that's the time when it's highly recommended. And Aisha, even that though she said this, and it was a statement of hers, the scholars, they say, It has a ruling of it being attributed to the Prophet Because that's where she got the ruling from. She wouldn't sanction something she had no knowledge for. But we all together. Next, inshallah ta'ala week, we're going to be speaking about what is it that is recommended for the man to do on the first night. The do's and the don'ts. And I encourage any one of you who have family members to, to make them come because this will help them a lot. Especially people ask a lot of questions of the, these sorts. Are we all together? And we'll be speaking about next week issues of divorce, things that cause divorce, why it happens and what makes it happen. And a lot of people ask the question of, I was very angry, I was vicious, I couldn't hold myself, and then I spoke it. We'll speak about that inshallah ta'ala also next week inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk.